right, so I wanted to go over the table design. When I started this build, the plan was to use a vacuum table. You can see here I, was, I have three stacks of three quarter inch MDF. If I hide this top one, you can see in here that it was going to be a little vacuum chamber. The vacuum hold down would be really cool. It has six zones and the idea was, was going to be to have cutoff valves that could turn the zones on and off. If I only want to use one area. But to be honest, it's going to take a while, and so I'm not going to use that. And instead, we're going to use a hold-down system. And you can see here that we have a screw-down clamping system that will work just fine for what we need. I figure that building a table system like this is a more standard way for most router designs, and it's pretty simple. So I'm going to go through and just show how I'm going to build this up. So this is the plan and it will bring it up high which is what we're after to keep that strength. This will allow, if I have a, a 1 inch bit in here, this will allow a, an inch of cutting which is exactly what we're after. Alright so this is the plan, the vacuum table is out and the new built up surface is in. So let's go ahead and get started. So I put three sheets of the MDF on the aux just to see what it looked like and it is super thick and it looks awesome. So when we do go to put a vacuum system on here, it's going to be really cool and sturdy. Just want to show that before we rebuild this, we're going to be replacing these two bottom sheets with a 20 by 40 and then we'll put a 20 by 80 in the center and that'll lift it up to the point of uh, allowing one board to be the spoiler. So it's pretty universal as far as the box goes and that's one of the things I really like about this machine. Let's get started. Alright, so I've gone through, cleaned up the the uh, electronics a little bit. Just going to move this out of our way. So our plan now is we're going to remove this center support. We're no longer putting a vacuum table in here. We're going to exchange this out the same size here with a 20 by 80. And we'll bring our workspace up higher. And then we'll cut this one down. Um, to fit in here and it should all work out to where we can put one piece of three-quarter inch MDF across here So let's go ahead and take this center piece out Now before I remove this bracket, I'm going to put a mark on here Okay, so we have all the hardware out I'm just going to get these T-nuts out. We're going to save this piece because eventually this piece is going to uh, be dropped in right here. We're going to cut it down. Alright, so we have our double brackets here. We're going to be trading these out for a triple bracket. So we'll use those and we'll just save all these screws and T-nuts for when we reinstall uh, the, the new 20 by 80 beam in here. And that will be our first step. We're going to take this out to the shop and uh, cut a 20 by 80 the exact same size as this one. Another thing you can do is you can take these the bottom row of T-nuts out but leave the top two in on the top row. And the reason for that is our triple brackets will be mounted in this top row and then onto the 20 by 80. Alright I'm just going to take these screws and hardware and set them to the side for now. Go out to the shop and cut my 20 by 80 at 710 millimeters. Okay, so I have my four triple brackets. And I've also cut my 2080 piece. Which is really going to bring it up high. Now one of the things I wanted to mention was you're going to want to measure, if you didn't mark the bracket on that side, which I forgot to mention, um, where the brackets go, you're going to want to measure over here. Check your measurements and mark it on this side. So something like that. You're going to want to put on the second on the second row up here. You're going to want to put a T-nut on each side. But eventually, we're going to do all three uh, rows here from the top down. So you should have something like this on each side and on the back as well. What 
what will happen is we're going to mount our L bracket on here. We're just going to leave it loose so we can move it around. Or do them on all four sides. Let's go ahead and do that now. One thing I want to mention is if you notice on the L bracket, the holes are off to one side, out a little bit further on one side than they are on the other. On this side here, where the holes are out further, you want that part against the beam. So you want the inside holes on the main beam here, just like you see here. Okay, let's continue. All right, so when you're finished, this is what you should have. You notice where the, these are on the inside holes, like we talked about. Something like this, it's still loose, I can move it around. And the same on both ends. And then that T-nut that we left on this cross brace, we'll be able to connect to. Go ahead and pull those brackets forward. So now, let's go ahead and put the screws in. There should be two screws on this side, two screws on that side. We'll go ahead and put those in. Get to slide the T-nut over to align it with the hole. And you may have to adjust, you know, loosen these screws so that you can move this L-bracket up and down. Alright, so let's go through and put those four screws in. One quick thing I wanted to mention is my work table here has a slight bow in it so that this center piece is not actually sitting on the ground so I had to lift the beam up a little bit in order to uh, make it even. But if you have to do that go ahead and do it and just line everything up and let's continue. Like I said you may have a small gap here and yeah, that's fine. That's not going to hurt anything. All right, that looks good. I'll take a piece of 20 by 40. I'm going to lay it on here, and I'm going to mark this end. Now, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap here, about eighth of an inch. There's no reason for me to try to squeeze this down in here. It'll be fine just like this. And I'm going to take and cut two of these out of the shop. I just cut the end off of this one. And one for the front here, one for the back. So let's do that now. Okay, so I've got the two pieces cut. Make sure you leave yourself a good eighth, quarter inch so you can slide these down in there. The front might not be the same as the back, depending on the squaring of the machine. And that is why we ran this underneath. So we could move this machine to square. So we want to add four T-nuts here. So we can connect to these four holes here. So this is what we have so far. I'm going to take two more T-nuts on each end down here. And this is what we're after. And the reason why, let me put it in here, is we could take our double corners mount them on the ends here. So now we have the center taken care of as well as the, the uh, edges. And if you can't see this you can check the model out a little bit closer. You'll see we're just mounting a double corner on the ends here and then we're going to be mounting the remaining screw holes, two screw holes on each side here. Okay and what I'll do is I'll, I'll zoom in, I'll bring the camera down and, and just show you the inside of this once we're done so you can get a better view. One of the things I wanted to mention also is you're going to want to loosen these side screws here and bring this up to match the, the top surface here. You know, make sure that the L brackets aren't sticking up higher. You want this flush. I just used the L bracket to go across there, held it up in place, and then tightened these back down. That worked out really good. So let's go ahead and put these two side corners on, the double brackets here and here. Okay, so I have both of these screws in. I do not have the outside push-in ones installed yet. My next move is to put the two uh, screws in here and finish this off. Now, 
I'm just taking my screwdriver and lining up the holes to make it a little easier. And I'm going to uh, make sure I keep this flush while I install these. Let's go ahead and do that now. It's going to be four of the eight millimeter screws. Okay, these are complete, but we still have to do the push-in, so we're going to do that now. Okay, so we have the push-in T-nuts. We're going to install these on this side rail here. They just go in by, you angle them a little bit. Now they float around there, so you have to be careful they don't go back to angle state. One tip is, because these have the spring ball on them, you don't want to push into it. Because as soon as you, it, like when you bring the screw in and you try to push in, it's going to angle and want to slip right back out. So you kind of have to just lightly get the screw started. Once it's started, you're okay. Let's go ahead and do this side. You angle them and then kind of take your fingernail and push them in. Okay, so this side is complete. We have successfully built up this area here, and we're going to do the same thing on the back. Uh, the same type of bracket system. The, we're going to repeat this whole process back here. So, we're just going to fast forward this part. At the end, I'll, like I said, I'll take the camera in, and we'll check out what it looks like uh, once it's complete. So let's go ahead and we'll go through that now. So once again, I've loosened these sides and I've brought this beam up to make it flush. We want this T to be flush. Now I'm going to go through and tighten them back down. That looks good. We're going to put our double corners on here now. We already have our T-nuts in here ready to go. It's very handy if you can hold a finger on the screwdriver like this. You can kind of line up the screw where it goes. Alright, so on the end corners, I also wanted to mention, you can, you can loosen them to raise them up and down to get the, the uh, push-in T-nuts lined up, but you're going to want to make sure that when you finally tighten them down, they are below the lip of the, the V-slot here because we want the MDF to sit right on top. Okay, so we're complete here. All right, I'm just going to grab a piece of MDF. Well, that, that's nice right there. And what's really nice about this, I think, is that it's up so high. So, you know, if I'm cutting through uh, a quarter inch material, for instance, like I did for this little test cut for the side plates, um, you can see I have plenty of room here. I think you can see that. But the great thing about it is you can also see that right where the mount is for, for the router, and honestly guys, I'm going to drill this out and put some of the, the tightening straps down here because there's just there's movement here and there's not much I can do about that without putting the tightening straps on there and just really tighten this down um, but you can see that these mounts here are in line with the wheels even at its furthest position down which would be there so that works out great there's a couple things you could do here uh, to if you do if you are working on something that's uh, larger than an inch in depth you could always, uh, you know, use half inch MDF here if you wanted to, to lower the bed down a little. Or, you could also use 20 by 60 for your center brace here. And you could use uh, a 20 by 20 across here. That would give you approximately an inch, 20 millimeters, uh, more, more space underneath. But for me, and what, whatever I'm working on, I can tell you right now, um, the reason I wanted to build this aux was to ensure that 
it was very low profile and it's cutting um, now if I was going to continue with the vacuum like I showed you earlier in the model the vacuum table yes you need this bigger opening to to build the vacuum box to fit down in here but honestly this is going to be the standard standard build I would say um, just the way it's set up right here it's just fantastic I'm really happy with this and we should be able to see more of a, a stronger cuts doing it this way now I'm going to drill three holes here according to the plan I'm going to drill three in the back as well I'm going to recess these holes about four millimeters in and then I'll take a uh, I believe it's 25 millimeter screw with t-nuts in the rail and I'll screw this down in here and perhaps I should have added the t-nuts uh, before I started here and just laid them in the rail but either way I can use the push in t-nuts here and they should work fine but that is the, how I plan on mounting the board my spoiler board the other thing I wanted to mention is and you, you'll probably be able to see this from the, the model a little better but with this all the way over like it is um, that leaves us a good uh, inch and a half I guess from here to here that will give us a just kind of a strip here on the side that never really gets cut into but will allow us to use uh, hold down clamps and for, for what I'm doing this board can be replaced at any time as a spoiler I mean that's its purpose to be cut into and the plan for me is that I'm just going to use screw down uh, uh, holding strips to hold whatever piece I'm working on wherever I'm working on it so you know of course this side you know it'll just have holes where I just screw it down and it's not this is not a permanent board it gets replaced every so often um, even on my bigger machine uh, with the vacuum hold down you know the vacuum pulls through three quarter inch MDF so it, after a while it just gets you know cut up so much that you have to get rid of it and get a new one and I have five pieces of MDF over there uh, that are cut to this exact size I took a 4 by 8 sheet cost me about 30 bucks I went and uh, this is at Lowe's and I went back and and had them cut it down to size and I believe it was 17 and a half by 29 and a half and I look forward to actually cutting now because I'm not dropping the router so far down uh, once I have this screwed down like I said I'm going to mark a center hole two side holes here recess them about of course the I'll drill them in so that I can fit a five millimeter screw and then I'll recess them about four four millimeters down and that will get the head far enough away from if I'm cutting into the, the spoiler board if I'm cutting four millimeters into the spoiler board I'm cutting too deep as it is you know the whole purpose is that you're just cutting through whatever material you have laying on top of it um, but this is great this is really nice so I hope this is helpful to get the uh, table built on your ox and I'll go through now and show the inside let me remove this and let's bring the camera down and take a look on the inside here okay we're having a look here at the inside of the build up table system we have our 20 by 80 beam here we have the the side rail here this is where the front plate is this is where we did the push in t-nuts you can see there you see the beam here how that's all set up everything is flush looks good so just having a look at this should give you an idea of how to go ahead and build that okay so I hope this was helpful in getting you started building your spoiler board table for the open builds ox CNC router thanks for watching